name is Karthikeyan Krishnan and I'm here just to uh, talk about my bowel cancer and how I survived it. I migrated to Australia in the year 1998 with my family. I have three sons. My wife uh, has just passed away. So I've been in this country for almost 20 years now. Because I have extensive family here, my sisters all reside here. My father and mother were also here in Australia before I migrated from India. It's just that my children could get a better education and better opportunities is uh, making a good life for themselves. So I've lived all over India for the first 40 years of my life. I've worked with the Bombay Customs and with the Indian Express Group as an administrative officer before I migrated. After I migrated here, I had my own business. I had a post office in Carlingford North and then I had a post office and a news agency in Glidesville which I ran effectively for about 14 years till I, I retired because of physical ailments. And this cancer thing has come about just about in the last one year. So the symptoms mainly were my inability to eat and my bowel movements were very irregular. So some days I would sort of constipate and some days I would have loose motions. It all came to a head somewhere in November, December of last year when I started having severe bleeding symptoms when I did open up my bowels. I did go to my GP and he said possibly it could be a case of severe food poisoning and he put me on uh, a liquid diet and uh, just a bit of uh, paracetamol. When it still persisted, he told me to um, take antibiotics for about a week to see if there was some kind of an infection in the guts, which also didn't prove very much to help. Then somewhere in the beginning of Feb, he sent me for a scan and the scans clearly showed that there was a lump in my colon for which uh, I was referred to a colorectal specialist. And he, in fact, told me, don't go home, just uh, go to the ride emergency department and get admitted. He felt that it was necessary that it should be, the surgery should be done soon. And I was shunted to the ride hospital. But when I did get discharged after a week, being given a date for surgery, uh, my sister and brother-in-law who have been looking after my welfare from the time I've come to this country opined that I should have a second opinion. And the second opinion I took was with Dr. Anil Keshava, who subsequently performed my surgery. And he told me that you have to get back into Concord Hospital and they did a major surgery on me on the 21st of Feb from which I took about a week or 10 days in hospital to recover. And then I was discharged and I'm now being taken care of by my sister and my brother-in-law. I think the, the mistake possibly I did was that when I was around 50, I did get a kit in the mail for a bowel cancer testing, which I just ignored because I was busy doing running my news agency. And now I realize that that indeed was a big mistake because, and, and the fact that it is, in my opinion, at that time, that is disgusting to poke a stick into your poo and put it into a bag and send it across. Whereas now that what has happened to me is about a hundred times more disgusting because tubes were coming out of all my orifices except possibly my eyes and ears. So that seemed so disgusting that if I had just taken the trouble of uh, sending a sample, it would have been possibly detected earlier and I would have had to do only a pinhole surgery instead of the major surgery that I have undergone. So I would request everyone to do the test as soon as they get the kit because if it's in the initial stages, the colorectal surgeon tells me 
that they can do just a pinhole camera surgery and uh, rectify your cancer or uh, uh, sort of do a smaller incision which will get cured in less than a week and it's much less painful and the recovery times are just about a week. Whereas in this case it's almost a month now, I'm still in pain and I'm managing my pain with various kinds of painkillers which can be avoided by just taking the test. I was also lucky that I did not have to put a stoma bag as I was told that the, in the event of the colon not healing or not being joined properly then they would connect an external tube with a bag so that all your excrement is gathering there and that they would teach me how to clean the bag which would have been even more disgusting than just poking a stick in your poo. So I would suggest that if you get the kit, do the test. Family were quite shocked because the consulting colorectal surgeon said that there is no sugar coating to this, it is cancer. So when you hear that cancer word, maybe I, I was shocked too, but the family were more shocked than me because they were not aware of what else was happening. But now that I don't have to do chemotherapy or radiation, I don't have a bag sticking out of my stomach, I feel I've been luckier than many other people who have to undergo chemotherapy and many other people who have a much longer healing time because of age or other physical condition. I've seen the, the family ties being strengthened and also that the medical community really has done a wonderful job starting from the time I was admitted from my prep work. Since I live alone, the nurses said that I should not be doing the preparatory work prior to the surgery at home, which was what was scheduled. They said, no, since you live alone and when you take those medications to clear your bowel, you might pass out. So they said, you better come to the hospital. So right from that kind of a concession till the surgery and post-surgery, the medical system has been immensely helpful and have done a great job. At this point, I still think that keeping good health is of prime concern because as you can notice now you're a burden on other people like your friends and relatives so to ensure that you have good health you have to undergo the tests that you have to take when any symptoms appear the fact that you live in a country where the medical system is so advanced and so well placed that sort of inspires me to share this episode with the majority community through systems like this video and that inspires me to also tell my friends and relatives to be more careful with their health. The symptoms were very similar to an upset stomach or a bit of a pain in the belly that didn't really matter because that's happened to you before but once you went after the scan to a colorectal surgeon and he tells you that there's no question of sugar coating, it is a cancer so and it, you have to get it out. That's when it hits you like a ton of bricks. But you have to carry on with life and face it and then see that you get yourself cured now that you have it. But you also need uh, family support which I had in plenty. But it upsets them more than it really upset me because they they possibly imagine the worst that could happen and I thought well I'm going to uh, get this surgery done and uh, maybe if I need I will do a chemotherapy or radiation or whatever it takes to um, overcome this cancer. My personal take would be that most of the South Asian community would like I'm, I'm talking more generally about the Sri Lankan and Tamil and Indian community who have this wrong notion as I had that eating red meat only will cause colon cancers or bowel cancers and because we don't eat red meat so much and when you eat only fish and maybe other white meat for those who are non-vegetarians and the others seem to eat only vegetarian dishes most of the time like us Tamil Brahmins you dismiss the case that this is not going to happen to me so you're more lax at handling the bowel test kit that they send you 
as opposed to other communities who eat a lot of meat, they have this feeling that there have been one or two cases in their families, so they take it more seriously than we do. But with the prevalence of this bowel cancer being more in Asian and uh, South Asian community, I would say that you're equally susceptible to bowel cancer as any other ethnicity. Since I'm a cricket uh, fan, I keep watching the McGrath Foundation being supported by uh, the Pink Sari Incorporated and all the women are sort of your own aunties and uncles and sisters and cousins who actively take part in that and they have delivered a, a great service to the breast cancer uh, what you call event in Australia. It's now recognized all over the country that the Pink, Pink Sari Foundation has done what they have done. And now that they have taken on this of the bowel cancer, I'm sure they'll do an equally good job and I wish them well. The message would be that please, when you do get that blue and white package in the mail, it also sort of denotes to you that you're over 50 and that sort of is something that you don't want to believe because when you're 50, you feel you're on the older side of life. So you tend to ignore that blue and white packet and think it's for old people. It's not for me. I can wait a few more years, but that's not the case. The day they send it, that 50 is just a, as a marker, as an age, which the health department possibly thinks is when you should test yourself for um, bowel cancer. So when you do get that, Please do your test immediately as if it was of prime importance, everything else can wait.